Hello, Calgary. The Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada is back in town, celebrating another successful week at the ATB Financial Classic. All that and more next. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. The Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada is back in Calgary for the ATB Financial Classic, marking the 11th playing of the event. We've been uh, preparing for this for, feels like since January or February. It's our favorite week of the year for sure. So we're, we're thrilled to be here finally. And I think we're lucky to be involved with a tournament of this capacity. I mean, the Mackenzie Tour has really become a launching pad for players on their way to the PGA Tour. Not only has the ATB Financial Classic been a staple on the Mackenzie Tour schedule, it's been an integral partner in the PGA Tour's efforts to give back in every community it touches. One thing that the PGA Tour does and that ATB absolutely tries to do is make a difference in every community that we do work in. One of our huge partners is the Calgary Stampeders and they've got the Stampeders Foundation, which is our charity, as well as the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. One thing that we do is try to provide opportunities and one of the ways that we do that is making sure we direct some of those funds to valuable partners that we work with. The ATB Financial Classic returns to Country Hills Golf Club. Sprawling just over 7,200 yards, the par 71 Talons course is the first Thomas McBroom design in Alberta. And it's also the site of Charlie Bull's first career McKenzie Tour title. Uh, I haven't played the course this year yet, but I hear it's a little different, a little firmer, so it might require a slightly less aggressive strategy this year. After missing four cuts in his first five starts this season, the defending champion needs a strong showing with just five events left to play. There really aren't any expectations or pressure. It's just been a rough season so far, and this course suits my game, I think, so I'm just hoping to go out and start the end of a strong season. Charlie Bull starts out strong in the first round of the ATB Financial Classic. The 25-year-old defending champion cards six birdies and an eagle to just two bogeys on the way to an opening six under 66, matching his career low round on the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. You know, and it's, it's just one of those things when you hit some nice golf shots, you, you build confidence off of those, you see the ball moving in the right direction. It started early hitting nice, you know, solid golf shots and at that point, you can settle into your round pretty nicely. Bull is one of six players teeing off in the morning wave to climb into the lead by day's end. They combine for 35 birdies, five eagles, and nine bogeys. Oklahoma's Max McGreevy, Florida's TJ Vogel, and Indiana's Chase Wright get in the hunt with matching 65s, as do Calgary natives Riley Fleming and Wes Heffernan. Playing on a sponsor's exemption, Heffernan, a former Mackenzie Tour player turned teaching pro, cards six birdies, two bogeys, and an eagle on the par 5 13th. Pretty solid round. I uh, kind of started off slow and then made a long putt on the fifth hole and then made a couple birdies on seven and eight and kind of just played really solid and ended up making an eagle on 13 to get to six under. And then I kind of started running the gas a little bit at the end, but kind of held it together and got it in on six under, which was pretty uh, satisfying. After holing out for Eagle on the final hole of the day, 24-year-old Riley Fleming also finds himself in the mix. I always love playing in Alberta, so uh, I've had some good success out here. My real good buddy on the bag is a member here, so that makes it a lot easier. We're just gonna have fun, lots of laughs, and try to stay patient. Three players sit one shot behind this group of leaders. Texas's Kramer Hickok, North Carolina's Trevor Cohn, and California's Kaz Hoffman are all in the hunt. Coming up next on This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. The boys from the Mackenzie Tour sharpen their battle skills. And then we hear from a man who's inspiring others while chasing his dream. My disability is my greatest blessing. 
and later, it's second round action at the ATB Financial Classic. All that and more after the break. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Battle is the original backyard axe throwing league. Uh, we've been the home of axe throwing since 2006. On an average day, we bring people in for events where we teach them how to throw an axe. Mackenzie Tour players Blake Palmer and Mark Blakefield each traded in their golf swing for an axe sling. Hello. Hey guys. How are you? Welcome to Battle. Uh, we're gonna start things off with a waiver. How's that sound? Sounds good. good. They stepped off the green and jumped into the ring for a lesson in this ancient art. My name is Dan, I'll be your coach today. We have four rules at battle. Rule number one is throw together, retrieve together. <laughs> is that good? Rule number good? two, when you're done throwing, put the ax on the block where you found it. Don't ever hand it off. <laughs> I train champions. <laughs> rule number three, we encourage you to sample some of Calgary's best local breweries, but we need you to keep it off of and behind the wooden barrier behind you. Now it's time to throw some axes. And rule number four, Dan is in charge. Always listen to your coaches. It's the best way to have fun and stay safe. Now, this would probably be illegal in Georgia. After a crash course in tossing the steel, it's time for Blake and Mark to test out their new skills. Second axe. Oh, broke the board. What do we got? We got a bullseye there? Went in with the bullseyes. Take it easy on the young kid. Right there, that's a bullseye. Right? Ah, can I get a hot tub? After several rounds, Blake was in the lead. And then Graham Sherman from Toolshed Brewing stepped up. Yeah, I'm win with the clutch. Oh, this should be big. Oh, yeah. Clutch! Yeah! <laughs> no way! <laughs> that's incredible. Clutch! No! That's clutch! No way! <laughs> That's got the awesome. game. <laughs> that was awesome. After a long day slinging steel, Blake and Mark cool off with a cold one with the champ. Nice. In golf, as in life, you don't have to be the biggest or the fastest or the strongest to succeed. You just have to possess that dogged determination to chase a little white ball into a little white cup. And that's exactly what Kyle Miller is striving to do. Golf attracted me because of the fact that you had to earn it. Um, a lot of sports and team efforts, I wasn't you know, really picked to be on the team because of my disability. And I seen early on that this sport, you had to earn what you were going to get out of it. Born with cerebral palsy, Miller's road to the McKenzie Tour has been more challenging than most. It affects my entire left side of my body. It almost acts as a benefit now. You know, I have limited range of motion in the one side, so I have less stuff to mess up in a sense. My disability is my greatest blessing because all it did was build a resilience bank that's endless. I always encouraged him that you can do anything that anybody else can do if you want it, but you gotta work for it. That's right. I knew at a very early age that with how I was being told what I wasn't going to do that. If I got to where I wanted to be that, ultimately I'd be a pioneer in that sense, and that's why I've done it. Golf's the vehicle in, in what I'm here to do to help people believe in themselves. Next, from Calgary, Kyle Miller. When the 26-year-old Calgary native teed it up in the first round of the ATB Financial Classic on a sponsor's exemption, he became the first person with cerebral palsy to play in a PGA Tour sanctioned event. And he's very much aware of the impact he makes by chasing a little white ball into a little white cup. I'm very much embracing it and, and using this opportunity to help kids believe in themselves and, and other people believe that they can do something. I'm very proud of him. For him to accomplish what he's done, from a standpoint of teaching and playing golf is, is literally a miracle. But in golf, as in life, success is measured in strokes and in rounds. And Miller struggled mightily in round one of his McKenzie Tour debut, but he's got a fighter's heart and the will to keep moving forward. I've always been chasing the same dream. 
constantly I've been told what I'm not gonna do and constantly got knocked down, well, constantly gotten up. So I do believe that if I you know, handle myself properly, the results will take care of themselves. When the second round of competition at the ATB Financial Classic gets underway, five of the six leaders from round one fall out of contention, leaving Chase Wright alone at the top of the leaderboard. When you shoot six or seven under, you shouldn't think about like, oh, this putt's to get me to six under. I've just been real patient out there, um, hitting a lot of good shots. My bad shots turn out well too, and making a few putts here or there. The Indiana native cards a 6 under 65 to match his round one score, tallying up a total of eight birdies to just two bogeys for the day. I haven't really been focusing on one thing. I guess I'm just keeping in front of me really well, and my speed's been great on the green, so just keep that up. There's a five-way tie at third, including Grayson Sig, who goes low on day two with a 63. He vaults up the leaderboard, matching the course record set by McKenzie Tour alum Tony Finau in 2013. It's cool to be in the uh, category with Tony Finau. He's out there on the PGA Tour doing good things, but uh, you know, I just went out there and played a good round of golf and added him up at the end, and it was a 63. But there's still a lot of golf out there left to be played. Positioned alongside Sig in third and in good standing for moving day are Brandon McIver, Patrick Newcomb. Johnny Ruiz and Yi Chow. While South Korea's Todd Bank climbs into solo second with a seven under 64 on day two. After the break. At the end of the day, my dream is to play on the PGA Tour. We sit down with two time McKenzie Tour champion, Max Rotliff. And then see who makes a move in round three of the ATB Financial Classic when this is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. When Max Rotliff burst onto the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada scene in 2016, he took the links by storm with four top 20 finishes and one top 10, a victory at the Sega Dakota Dunes Open. With all of his successes, he finished eighth on the 2016 Order of Merit, earning exemptions into two web.com tour events. Well, it was great to get those uh, opportunities to go out and play there. The game is the same, 150 yards on the web.com tour is 150 yards on this tour, just as it's 150 yards on the PGA Tour. But it's a comfortableness um, out there, PGA Tour here, um, you just gotta adapt to that. But his time at the next level was short-lived. If you just look at the results, yes, it's a roller coaster. But if you look at the reasons for the roller coasters, I've been hopping back and forth between tours, and it's not me really. I played the best when I planned for something. I guess uh, I heard some guys say that's very German of me. Um, I'll take that as a compliment. I'm a guy that if I plan correctly, if I prepare correctly then I'd play my best golf. Not to be defeated, he's back on the McKenzie Tour and coming in hot. With a top five finish and a victory at the Bayview Place Cardtronics Open presented by Times Colonist, he currently ranks third on the order of merit. Every time you get a win, it means a lot, and especially when you get it early in the season, it just kickstarts the season for you. It opens doors that might not have been opened before. So it's helpful, but it's also very encouraging to keep working on this stuff throughout the year and just stay motivated to keep on going. With the season beginning to wind down, there's only one goal. Keep moving onward and upward. And Max Rotliff has his eye on the prize. I wanted to win out here, and I wanted to secure a web.com card. That's everybody's goal out here is to, to come out and get a web.com card in advance. I want to just keep going now and take that momentum from last week's uh, finish and just keep the foot down. At the end of the day, uh, my dream is to play on the PGA Tour. The next step to uh, get closer to that dream is what that come to. Moving day at the ATB Financial Classic proved to be a challenge for those looking to separate from the pack. On a day marked by gusting winds, only 28 of the 66 players who make the cut post below par scores, and five find themselves atop the leaderboard at day's end. 
including defending champion Charlie Bull. He climbs into a share of the lead with a three under 68 on day three. Solid round, conditions were a lot tougher. Setup was a little different. You just had to take a lot more of a conservative approach today, which is if you get aggressive out there, it can really bite you hard uh, with the greens getting firm and it being windy. Bull's playing partner, 22-year-old Corey Pereira, matches him with a 68, posting five birdies to just two bogeys on the way to a 12 under par total. Super tough out there today, obviously it was blowing like 15, 20 miles per hour, and the pins were tough, I thought. I just tried to really grind it out and compete really hard today. It's exciting, to be honest. You know, I'm in contention at a McKenzie Tour event. I'm gonna try to enjoy the day tomorrow, and I've been playing so well that, you know, I'm, I'm confident that will continue. California's Johnny Ruiz also jumps into the mix with a two under 69. The 23 year old starts the day two shots back, but takes sole possession of the lead with a five under front side. But he slows down on the back nine, going four over in his final six holes and settles for a tie for first. I knew anything under par would be a good round. I got it going pretty early and just played pretty solid throughout the whole round. Uh, I guess I just got a little tired towards the end but uh, made a few bad swings, but still two under is a pretty good score out there today. Grayson Sig follows up his course setting 63 with a bogey-free 69 on moving day and finds himself in contention in just his eighth start on the McKenzie Tour. And it was a grind from the first tee to the 18th green and course is super, super firm and greens are getting faster and faster with this win, but uh, yeah, to make no bogeys out there is, is definitely a really good, good plan. You know, I made a lot of really good chips again today when I missed the green, and there was a few putts that I made from, for par that kind of kept my round going out there. The game plan today was just trying to hit fairways and greens and, and go from there. South Korea's Todd Bake improves his position, climbing into the five-way tie for first after a one under 70. Oh, it was so windy out there. Uh, felt like someone turned a fan out there. It was going everywhere. Hit it really good. Just missed, missed a lot of putts out there, so same game plan to stay patient one shot at a time, so we'll see how it goes. Meanwhile, 36-hole leader Chase Wright holds serve. A two over par 72 positions him just one shot off the lead pack at 11 under par alongside Calgary native Wes Heffernan. Heffernan posts the low round of the day with a five under 66, thanks to four birdies and an eagle at the par 5 13th. Five under today felt pretty good. You know, and Probably the, one of the best ball striking rounds I've ever had. I had a lot of good putts that didn't quite go in. But it was one of those rounds where it could have been three or four lower than that. So it was a really good round of golf. There are 10 players within three shots of the lead, setting up a true final round showdown at the ATB Financial Classic. After the break, we'll see who can break through and take the title at the ATB Financial Classic when this is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. With a very crowded leaderboard at the start of the final round of competition, the race for the title at the ATB Financial Classic is wide open. Several round three leaders, Charlie Bull, Corey Pereira, Johnny Ruiz, and Grayson Sig fall out of contention early, leaving room for new leaders to emerge. And Chase Wright starts off strong with one bogey, four birdies, and an eagle to close out the front nine to secure a one-stroke advantage over South Korea's Todd Bake at the turn. All these guys are good. You're gonna hit bad shots, you're gonna hit good shots, and just how you manage your game and your self-motivation throughout the day, and that's what uh, turns good golfers into great golfers, I think. Bake closes off his front nine in good standing, but loses his balance at the turn with a double bogey on 13, leaving room for Wright, who posts the clubhouse lead. And closing out a great week in Calgary, Wes Heffernan charges up the leaderboard to finish off his round in a tie for second with Bake at 14 under. And so, Chase Wright's 15 under par total stands, and his final round, four under 67, is good enough for the victory in just his eighth career start on the McKenzie Tour. Anybody that knows me knows I've kind of put myself through a lot, maybe the last year and a half. I've persevered, and I'm just really proud of myself more than anything. The victory vaults the 28-year-old up 52 spots into seventh place on the order of merit, 
and with just four events remaining on the 2017 schedule, the race for those top five spots and web.com tour status is heating up. But Chase Wright is now in great position for the final run. With another successful event in the books, there's a shift in the order of merit. Patrick Newcomb remains in fifth after his success last week at the Syncrude Oil Country Championship presented by Akon while Max Rotliff drops one spot after missing the cut in Calgary. American Kramer Hickok moves back up to claim third with a T14 finish. Robbie Shelton didn't play this week, opening the door for the new number one, American Johnny Ruiz, who finished in the top five. It was a great week of competition and community at the 2017 ATB Financial Classic, all benefiting the Stampeders Foundation. The community really embraces this event. We've been here for 11 years and there's a reason and that's uh, number one, the community support that we get. A real huge component of the ATB Financial Classic is a charitable component. You know, over the years, uh, we've raised over a million dollars uh, for charity and so we're very pleased uh, today to present a check for $38,500 to the Stampeders Foundation, a very worthy cause. It's a way to create awareness. The foundation does a lot of good stuff. Primarily, it's uh, helped support uh, amateur football in the city and surrounding area. But they do other stuff. The list goes on and on. It's about trying to put as much money and, and, uh, and awareness back in the community as possible. And I think ATB is probably one of the best businesses in Calgary that does that. I'm very grateful to be involved with the McKenzie Tour. Uh, get out here, spread some awareness, watch some great golf, and have a good time, and really just enjoy the people. Join us next week on This is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada as we head to Ottawa for the National Capital Open to support our troops. We'll see you then.